After doing this module, you will be able to define what a problem is. You will also be able to know the structure of a problem. You will also know how to identify the classes of problems. There could be some problems which are ill-defined and there are others which are well-defined. After this, you shall also be able to differentiate between well-defined and ill-defined problems. Also, it will help in understanding the whole process of problem solving and the steps that are involved in solving problems. So let us first try to understand what a problem is. Every day from the very moment we wake up till the time we retreat to bed, we come face to face with problems that we have to solve. We seldom wonder what really qualifies to be a problem. How do we go about solving the endless series of problems that we face? What makes us perceive a problem as a problem? What steps are involved in solving the problems? The attempt to find answers to the same has intrigued researchers from multiple disciplines. Because of the centrality of problem solving, it has been studied extensively by psychologists interested in the nature of thinking and cognition. In psychology, early attempts to understand problem solving were made by Gestalt psychologists and later by information processing theories. This module will help us find answers to problem solving. In our discussion, we will focus on real life examples on problem solving rather than on solving artificial laboratory type problems. In the context of cognitive psychology, a problem is any situation in which we are trying to reach a goal and we must find a means to reach that goal. Think of a problem that you may have encountered in the recent past. How did you deal with the problem? Write step-by-step -step process of thinking and acting on the problem. Let's move further. A problem can be as simple as how did you ensure that you will wake up on time to reach your work or for your class? How did you decide how will you reach your destination? May it be college, office, hospital or any other place. How will you decide what you are going to eat and how will you procure your food? Whether these will form the set of your current problems or any other issues such as seeking employment, solving a mathematical notation, getting good grades, providing care for an elderly member of the family or making larger profits in business will all depend on your personal context. But all these are problems that people have to solve. Thus, each individual tries to solve problems on a day-to-day -day basis. Problem solving or creating solutions to problems is a very important cognitive process or task that all of us engage in. However, a problem may differ from previously encountered problems or it may be alike other problems. It may put variable demands and also elicit different types of thinking in the person trying to solve them. Let us come to understanding the structure of a problem. Let us relook at the problems we just mentioned and try to come up with solutions for the same. To be able to wake up on time, you will have to decide whether you want to put up an alarm or any other device such as phone, television or music system or ask anybody in the family to wake you up. To reach a destination, you are likely to plan in advance how long it will take to reach there and what means of transport may be available for reaching there. To decide what you eat and how, will, how you will have to weigh endless options whether to cook at home or bring food cooked from outside home. If cooking at home then what resources and material are available and what and how much can be cooked from it. Likewise if food is ordered from outside what can be ordered and how much. You are also likely to weigh the financial aspects and a number of other aspects such as the choice of cuisine, 
location while solving the problem for what you eat. So uh, as you can also see in the figure, a problem has an initial state, it will have a goal state and a set of path or operators for reaching that goal. Let us try to understand this more closely. From the discussion that we just held, one may conclude that solving a problem entails the goal, that is in this case to eat something and the numerous paths that can be taken to reach the goal, that is from where and what to procure for eating. Each path includes numerous sub-steps and sub-goals that fit together to meet the larger goal. Thus, putting it in very simple terms, every problem has an initial state or a current situation that helps define and limit the nature of problem and a desired outcome or the goal that needs to be achieved through a series of steps and a path for reaching that goal. The problem space theory by Newell and Simon states that problem solving is a search with pro within problem space. They define problem space as the set of states or possible choices that one the problem solver faces at each of the steps in moving from initial state to the goal state. The problem solver moves through the space from state to state by various operations. Now let us move to understanding the classes of problems. For solving any problem, the first and the foremost requirement is to be able to clearly identify and define a problem. Problems can be classified into two categories, well-defined problems and ill-defined problems. The well-structured and ill-defined distinction originated from Reitman, where he classified problems based on information on three components, namely start state, goal state, and transformation function. Let us try to understand more on them. When are we able to think about a problem better? Clearly the answer to this question is when we are able to identify and clearly define the problem at hand. Directed or rational thinking begins when a particular problem is well defined. In a well defined problem, the initial state, the goal state and one or more paths or the intermediate legal transition states or what we call as operators to obtain that goal is clearly defined. The path of such a problem can be specified in terms of a series of intermediate states that can be considered its sub goals. The way in which we move from one state or sub goal to the next state or sub goal is defined by a set of rules. All of these are well specified with clarity and certainty in a well defined problem. For instance, in the game of chess, the initial state is defined by the players lined up on the chessboard for opening the move. The final goal state is defined by checkmate. The operators are the legal moves of the game that help achieve the sub goal and eventually the final goal of checkmate. You can see uh, the game of chess in the figure. Another classic game to understand problem solving is the Hanoi Tower problem. You can see it in the picture. The Tower of Hanoi was invented by the French mathematician Lucas and has been used frequently in problem solving studies. As you can see in the picture, the Tower of Hanoi puzzle consists of three pegs and several disks of varying sizes. Given a start state, when the disks are stacked on one peg, the task is to reach the goal state in which the disks are stacked on a specific peg. There are certain rules that only one disk can be moved at one time and no larger disk can be placed on a smaller disk. The player is given a set of rules and they start with it. And the disks of different sizes are stacked on the first of the three pegs. The problem is well defined. The disks have to be moved to the third peg. While doing so, only the top disk can be moved to the other peg. 
with the restrictions that only one disc can be moved at one time and no larger disc can be placed on smaller disc. The solution to the problem is based on the mathematical recursive principle. To solve the problem, one must find a path through the problem space to progress from the initial state to the final goal state. When directed thinking is applied to the problem, it would result in the problem being solved in the minimum number of moves. That can be calculated by applying the mathematical formula 2n minus 1, where n denotes the number of disks. That is, for a 3 disk problem, a minimum of 7 moves will be required to solve the, uh, the puzzle. Let us now move to ill-defined problems. All problems we know cannot have a well-defined solution and a well-defined problem. Many of the daily life problems seem remote from the problems of chess and the Tower of Hanoi just discussed. For instance, getting a good job or making a successful career or finding a life partner may be a problem which has no set operators and it can function in a directed manner. All problems cannot have a well-defined problem. Many of the daily life problems seem remote from the problems of chess and the Tower of Hanoi stated above. For instance, getting a good job or making a successful career or finding a life partner may be a problem for which no set operators can function in a directed manner. Here, although the beginning is defined with clarity, the goal state may not be defined in a finite way. Here, how one defines a good job or a successful career or what characteristics one wants in a life partner may have different interpretations for different people. These problems are ill-defined as the initial state, the goal state and the paths or operators that can be taken to achieve the goals are ambiguous. Ill-defined problems are those in which the goal state, the initial state and the operators are not clearly defined. For example, writing a reflective journal, painting a picture and creating a bouquet of flowers are two ill-defined problems as their solutions and paths to achieve the goal cannot be spelled out clearly at the beginning of the task or at the initial state. We have already understood what qualifies to be a problem and what well-defined and ill-defined problems are. Now we have to get acquainted with the process of problem solving. Let us consider some general problem solving strategies. John Bransford and Barry Steen have used the acronym IDEAL, I -D -E -A -L, for five steps. I stands for identifying problems and opportunities. D stands for defining goals and representing the problems. E for exploring possible strategies. A denotes anticipating outcomes and acting on those. L stands for looking back and learning from the whole situation. Uh, just sharing a conversation between two friends. One of the friends, Rina, says that I keep asking for a peon, but my officer does not appoint a peon. To this, Shabana replies that did you try talking to her about it? Rina responds that I have made repeated attempts to explain her that a peon needs to be appointed. She says we do not have a post for a peon and taking a peon is a tedious and long process. Shabana thinks for a minute and then says, but why do you need to get a peon? Rina responds, because otherwise I or Rina has to do all the work on my own and the officer keeps asking me to come to her office for various explanations and file work. Her office is at the ground floor while my desk is at the second floor and with no lift or elevator, I have to take the stairs I have to get tired all through the day. Can you identify what problem is Rila facing? One may likely to say that she wants a peon to be appointed. 
but is it really the appointment of the peon that she wants or is it that she does not want to climb the stairs repeatedly through the day as it is a tiring exercise for her one of the critical steps in problem solving is identifying the problem correctly a number of times people jump to naming the first problem that comes to their mind without actually identifying the true and solvable problem finding a solvable problem leads us to take specific action in the solving of the problem in the problem that we just shared what should reena do if we identify the problem as appointment of a peon then the goal is to try to convince the officer to appoint one but if we represent the problem as reena getting tired making repeated visits to her officer then the goal is to cut down on the number of visits in each of the cases the problem solving will take a different path depending on the chosen goal in addition to that to represent the problem and set the goal you have to focus attention on relevant information understand the words of the problem and understand the problem as a whole to understand this better let us understand another problem suppose you and your friend try to decide and uh, you decide to go for trekking you have reached a river bank and you see two poles at the sides of the bank you plan to cross the 50 feet deep and 20 meter wide rift and several miles long river you have a pair of pliers candle matchbox and an endless supply of rope how will you and your friend cross the river how did you solve the problem did you try to use all the provided material while trying to solve the problem are the factors impeding or accelerating reaching a solution this problem is instrumental in understanding that while representing a problem you have to focus only on the relevant information here the most relevant of all information is that you have an endless supply of rope and two poles at each side of the river bank all other information given does not help you in solving the problem second it is important to understand the words of the problem the language used to define a problem powerfully determines how it will be represented mentally and how the problem will be approached it appears that human perception and comprehension of the problems influences the ease with which the problem will be solved lastly the entire problem needs to be seen and dealt as a whole rather than focusing on the individual parts of the problem now let us understand how we explore possible solution strategies think of a problem that you tried to solve in the past did you explore all the possible strategies for solving the problem did you seek advice from anyone to solve the problem did that person come up with a solution that you may have not thought of we all face problems and try to find solutions to the same but it is not unlikely that we feel that some of us are better problem solvers than others why is this so this is because some of us better identify the problem and also explore all the possible solution strategies while some of us may only solve problems in a set fashion creative problem solvers come up with new and creative solutions to everyday problems the kinds of procedures and strategies that can be applied for problem solving will be discussed in detail in some of the other modules right now we will restrict to only this now after representing the problem and exploring the problem solutions the next step is to weigh all the solutions and select the best possible solutions among all and anticipate the consequences of that solution once you have chosen the path 
you will act on it. It is obvious that the plan will meet with some obstacles and along the way you will have to devise strategies to deal with each of these obstacles in order to reach the larger goal. For instance, it is possible that you make a study plan and are able to execute it for some days but then you have unexpected guests and that disturbs your plan. Here you will find that you will have to find another way to compensate for the time you spent with the guests. Finally, it is important to look back at the entire situation and critically evaluate whether the entire problem was dealt with successfully and whether the desired outcome was met. Here the parts and the final state of the problem will become instrumental in deciding how one will act in a problem similar to a current one. The feedback one receives by reflecting on all the steps taken to solve the problem will feed into the future problem solving. The strategies that led to success are likely to be repeated and those that did not yield the, desi the desired result are likely to be avoided in the future. So let us quickly summarize all that we have gone through. We said that a problem is any situation in which we are trying to reach a goal and we must find a means to reach that goal. And also that a problem has an initial state, a goal state and a set of paths or operators for reaching the goal. Problems can be identified into well-defined and ill-defined problems. In a well-defined problem, the initial state, the goal state and one or more parts of the operators to obtain the goal are clearly stated. Ill-defined problems are those in which the goal state, the initial state and the operators are not clearly defined. Overall problem solving involves identifying the problem and opportunities, secondly defining goals and representing the problems, thirdly exploring the possible strategies, anticipating outcomes and acting on it, lastly looking back and learning. To begin with, have you ever wondered what is a problem? In the context of cognitive psychology, a problem is any situation in which we are trying to reach a goal and we must find a means to reach that goal. Problem solving or creating solutions to a problem is a very important cognitive process or task that all of us engage in on a day-to-day -day basis. Solving a problem entails the goal and the numerous paths that might be undertaken to reach the goal. Every problem has an initial stage or a current situation that helps define and delimit the nature of the problem. A desired outcome or the goal that needs to be achieved through a series of steps and a path for reaching that goal. The problem space theory states that problem solving is a search with problem space. They define problem space as the set of states or possible choices that one of the problem solver faces at each of the steps in moving from the initial state to the goal state. The problem solver moves through the space from state to state by various operations. For solving any problem, the first and the foremost requirement is to be able to clearly identify and define a problem. Problems can be classified into two categories, 
well-defined problems and ill-defined problems. The well-structured and ill-structured distinction originated with Rietman, where he classified problems based on information on three components, namely start state, goal state, and transformation function. In a well-defined problem, the initial state, the goal state, and one or more paths are intermediate legal transition states or operators to obtain that goal are clearly defined. The path of such a problem can be specified in terms of a series of intermediate states that may be considered its sub-goals. For instance, in the game of chess, the initial state is defined by the players lined up on the chessboard for the opening move. The final goal state is defined as checkmate. The operators are the legal moves of the game that help achieve the sub goals and eventually the final goal of checkmate. In an ill-defined problem, the goal state, the initial state, and intermediate legal transition states or operators to obtain that goal are not clearly defined. For instance, getting a good job or making a successful career or finding a life partner may be a problem for which no set operators can function in a directed manner. Here, the solutions and paths to achieve the goal cannot be spelled out clearly at the beginning of the task or at the initial state. In addition to that, how one perceives the goal state may also be different for different persons. John Bransford and Barry Steen have used the acronym IDAL IDL for five steps in problem solving. These include identifying the problems and opportunities, defining goals and representing the problems, exploring possible strategies, anticipating outcomes and acting, and finally, looking back and learning. Let us examine each of these steps in detail. One of the critical steps in problem solving is identifying the problem correctly. A number of times, people jump to naming the first problem that comes to their mind without actually identifying the true and solvable problem. Finding a solvable problem leads us to take specific action in solving the problem. The next step is to define the goals and represent the problem correctly. For doing this correctly, you will have to focus your attention on relevant information, understand the words of the problem, and understand the problem as a whole. Third, to be better problem solvers, you must explore all the possible solutions and strategies for solving the problem. After representing the problem and exploring the possible solutions, the next step is to weigh all the solutions and select the best possible solution among all and anticipate the consequences of that solution. 
Once you have chosen the plan, you will act on it. Finally, it is important to look back at the entire situation and critically evaluate whether the entire problem was dealt with successfully and whether the desired outcome was met. The feedback one receives by reflecting on all the steps taken to solve the problem will feed into future problem solving. Let us summarize what we have just understood. A problem is any situation in which we are trying to reach a goal and we must find a means to reach that goal. A problem has an initial state, a goal state and a set of path or operators for reaching the goal. In a well-defined problem, the initial state, the goal state and one or more paths or operators to obtain that goal are clearly stated. Ill-defined problems are those in which the goal state, the initial state and the operators are not clearly defined. Problem solving involves identifying the problem and opportunities, defining goals and representing the problems, exploring the possible strategies, anticipating outcomes and acting, looking back and learning.